All right, guys, what's going on? Jay's Two Cents here, and it is July, which means it is time for this month's Jay. What do you think? Today, I specifically asked for your guys' custom water-cooled builds which means I shouldn't be surprised by the fact that I was sent a whole bunch of full setups with no internal shots of their, their PCs, water-cooled builds, and AIO-cooled builds. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer, and right now they are proud to announce expansion and availability to Australia, the Netherlands, France, and Italy. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. And all builds are backed by the BLD Peace of Mind warranty. To get started building your next gaming PC, visit the BLD link in the description below. All right, so we got a little bit of a mix of stuff here. We've got Nick and Phil over there behind the camera somewhere, and uh, hi. What's up? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we got kind of a mix. We got some small form factors, which are always challenging when it comes to water cooled. We've got some full tower cases, and I did the best I could to completely omit any of the Lian Lee O11 dynamic from the lineup, because here's the thing, anytime you ask for a water-cooled build, you just get the same Lee and Lee case over and over and over, because admittedly, it's a good case, and a lot of the work is already done for you. But I wanted to give people some inspiration for their water-cooled builds, because when the hot months come around is when people start considering maybe doing water-cooled stuff. We already did a video recently where we talked about the difference between you know AIO and uh, you know whether or not water cooling is completely dead. So we'll show you guys here that it's not. All right, first up here, we've got Zachary Faulkner, famous sounding name. What's your name, Zachary? Zachary Faulkner. Anyway, he says, here's his first custom loop in a mini ITX chassis because he hates himself. Soft tubing because he doesn't hate himself that much. Uh, specs are right there, as you guys can see. It's a 3080 FE with an EK water block and an N case M1. Now that's a that's like a nine liter case, if that. It's super tiny. So here's what it looks like on the outside. You can see it's not much bigger than a shoe box. But you can see on the inside there, you've got this little side mount bracket that attaches the 240 radiator too, which is the biggest you can fit in there. He's got some slim fans at the bottom, as you can see, pulling air in from the bottom. So already it's got four fans on this chassis, which should be good enough. I'm curious as to what the airflow is gonna be like, because as you can see here, the fans go right up against the block and the power supply and stuff, whereas the Loki Ghost S1 case that we did actually had bottom to top airflow. So whereas that's coming in the side and immediately hitting obstruction, I'm curious to what his temps are like. He doesn't say. But as you can see, once you take that radiator out, you've got uh, all the soft tubing here. Now this is pretty well thought out. There's some things on here that tell me he figured out where some of his shortcomings were. Hey, I just realized he's got two radiators. Check that out. He's got what appears to be one right here. It is a radiator on the bottom. So he did a, he did a 240 ride on the bottom with slim fans, as well as a 240 ride on the side. So he's got 480 millimeters worth of cooling in an N1. So that, that's already crazy. But check this out. You see these 90s right here? This is a 45, that's a 90, this is a 90 into a 45. That shows me he's clearly thinking about this because what he did is, I can assume as he was building it and trying to put the case side or the radiator side panel back on, he could kind of see where it was bending the tube. You don't want it to kink and pinch because then obviously you'll have bad air, uh, water flow. He did that to alleviate some of the crazy bends that are on this, this tubing. I'm trying to figure out where the heck his pump is. Oh, it's on the back right here. Look at that. External. Yeah, I see that. So he just kind of screwed that into the back vent. I was gonna say, there's no way that's fitting in there, but that's probably looks like a Lane DDC pump. But I thought this one would be a good one to show you guys simply because of the fact that it's his first build and he overcame that. Yeah. So good job there, Zachary, I approve. All right, so next up here is Marios Delanos. Delanos? Anyway, it says his full custom uh, or copper custom loop. So check this out. I like the fact that he's got copper tubing and copper framework. And matching accents on the GPU block. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, tr I, I'm trying to figure out if he painted those. I'm gonna assume so. I, I'm not sure, I mean, the match is so good between the copper tubing. Yeah. Unless it's painted copper tubing. But if you look at this, it's got this awesome, I don't wanna say steampunk. It doesn't look steampunk to me, it just looks industrial, if like you will. Old West. Yeah, like this lamp right here really ties in really well. The wood tones and then the faux brick. I like this a lot. Um, looks like this is obviously a custom made chassis, which I'm wondering if he actually brazed and like soldered these all together. But I like the fact that his tubing as well as the, oh yeah, this is clearly painted. Look at it. You see this right here? I, I think he took copper tubing and then he painted it to match the paint on the frame, which is, which is perfectly fine. But I like the wood tone in the back, the stained wood that he used to make the, uh, the motherboard tray and stuff. And all of his runs are perfectly parallel. You know what's unique about this? And I, did, I just now noticed this. When I chose this one earlier, I thought this was a 360 rad, but it's clearly not. It's three 120 mil rads. So he's going into one and out of one. So he's made like a series of 120 rads. Um, I don't think that'd be bad. 
I mean, it might be a little bit extra resistance than say running through two or a single 360 crossflow rad, but I mean, it's unique. It fills up the space. It looks nice. I was also going to say that it it's a lot. It looks a lot more filled in versus just one single rad. And you got to play around with the pipes more. But you know what it allows him to do? It allows him to enter in the bottom and exit out the top. Because they do have um, they do have cross flow radiators, right? So you have a, um, a, a, a dual pass radiator, which is, goes in one side, makes a U-turn and comes back and goes out the same side. And then they have cross flow, which Alpha Cool makes some cross flow rads, uh, where they go in one side, it goes through all the fin or they're all the rows at the same time and comes out the opposite side of the radiator which you could have done, but I think this looks neat because it gave an opportunity to use three fans that are separated and really just sort of give it a nice uh, industrial feel. And you don't have to like make a super long run all the way up the side when... Which admittedly wouldn't have looked as good as this does in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I like that. There's this whole setup, nice wood tones. Um, I don't feel like the mat really, the desk pad really, it really goes with his theme here though. Honestly. Oh, he also made himself a little monitor riser here. Look at this. For his laptop to slide under. Looks like a MacBook or something. But I like that because it's the same tubing that he used mm -hmm. to build his rig. Good job. All right, next up is Diniguan. 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 <laughs> there you go. Nice. Tagalog? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he's got, he's got, he's got two setups here. So he's got 10900K, uh, which is this dual loop for gaming and fun. Although he could do both on both systems, but on, on the big system, but whatever. I digress. Here's his setup. I like this. Uh, dude, look at the, he's got one of those, the wall control um, wall mount things and he just put his GPU coolers on there or GPUs, they're full on GPUs. I like his, how are these monitors mounted to the wall? So it looks like, huh? So here's the wall mounted PC, which I really like. It's got one of the EK 120 millimeter um, pump slash reservoir combos. He's got three uh, SL Uni fans on there with a white rad. The only, you know what's kind of bugging me about this right here? is the fact that the thermal take is upside down. But I would have found a way to maybe like cover that. I mean, we're be, we have to really nitpick at this point because these, these loops look so nice. Yeah. This particular case normally has little standoffs that have a plexi side panel on this, but he just chose to make it a full open air chassis. Um, GPU is completely upside down while water cooled. I've never tried this. I don't know if this would affect flow at all. Obviously air could get trapped up here, but as long as he fully bleeds it, that's not gonna matter because the air obviously gets trapped here. Here's his other system. See, what I like is that he doesn't have anything crazy custom here. It's a dual loop. So you can see he's got more of a clear blue loop and then more of an opaque loop. This is that Fantex distro block, which you can put in on any case that accepts 140 millimeter fans. One of the first times we've seen someone using the Royal RGB. Check that uh, out. He seems like he has a theme of like, always doing two of the same bends for stuff. Yeah, I like it. Well, yeah, it's like a symmetrical kind of thing, which is It's dope. pleasing. It's nice though. He's got a nice thick radiator up top. Um, I like the fact that he's got this distro block in the bottom as well though. He's also using the uh, Fantex fittings, which might be some of the thickest and heaviest fittings we've ever used. I'm not sure I like the black fittings on the GPU loop and the chrome fittings on the CPU loop. I kind of wish that he had kept that theme throughout. Because I know he was trying to differentiate the loops but I see how they're chrome up here and they're black here. So the two loops have two different color fittings. It's funny, I, I picked these beautiful builds because I am I wanted to challenge myself to have any sort of critique that didn't seem superficial. Like even these bends are nice, you know? All right, good job, Diniguan. All right, so this is Met, Metze, Meta. Okay, so I chose this one because he says this is his first build since high school and his first liquid cooling build ever. So Threadripper 3960X, no slouch of a CPU, that's for sure. 6900 XT Gaming Trio, Dominator Platinum, 64 gigs. I mean, just an all out crazy build in a Meshify 2. So already not the biggest case and it's not a water-cooled graphics card. I don't know if these are, if he bought black tubes or if he did the painting method like we showed everyone how to do. Um, it looks nice. I only brought this one out because I wanted to show the things he was doing right and maybe the things that I would recommend changing. First of all, you've gone this far on this build. I think sleeved cables would just make it look that much nicer because this right here, as I'm sure as you noticed, is just brands don't take the time to make their wires look as nice as they could. I don't think it would even be that much more expensive to start including full individually sleeved cables in all of their power supplies, given what they're already charging you for good power supplies. But the reason why I even brought this up, a little bit of extra work could have gone a long way. For instance, this run right here is off by like, a half a degree. This might be coming out at a slight angle just to clear the res. 
because if that's coming from the radiator, then yeah, this might be on a higher plane than that. So it might be level horizontal. It's just if we turned the case 90 and looked at it straight on, we would see it going down. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like a ramp right now. Yeah. So here's another photo with the lighting on. I want to say I don't like it in RGB mode <laughs> that much. There it is with blue and violet or ultraviolet, whatever it is. I like that one much more. I had to really nitpick this one just because of that one. But this is his very first build since high school and his first water-cooled build ever. So you guys can do it too if Metze did. Dave Seats says it's his in-wind D-frame case. You got D-frame, it's right there. See it? Uh, an AMD 5900X 2080 Ti for now. I like how he says for now, like it's just some pleb. Oh, you got a 2080 Ti for now. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, it's like how many people were like, can I have it? 32 gigs of RAM, which is like we've talked about a million times now. If you don't have 32 gigs, you don't have a computer. So obviously he's going with the golf theme. So this is the golf racing theme back from the original like GT, uh, 4 GT. I think it was actually called the GT40 back then, but I digress. You can see it has an automotive theme. This is something, what caught my attention with this one here is the expansion foam under the window. No, um, it's the <laughs> AN lines, and, or stainless steel braided lines with AN fittings, which is something people have asked me to do a long time. They've been like, Jay, do an automotive theme where you use stainless steel lines and AN fittings. And I've always said, it's not the first time it's been done. I want to do it. It's just, I, I personally, it can go really right or it can go really wrong. So I see what he's doing here with the D-frame, and I, and I do like the fact that he's tied it into a specific racing era. Um, we talked uh, in a video that you guys will find in the future here about radiators and water cooling parts and how Premachill has rads that you can get in just about any color these days. I like the fact that he's either painted and or powder coated or slash powder coated his D-frame to match the bluish, or at least as best he can within the golf color. My issue here, and you can see here, this is better lighting with it next to the car. He did a much better job at matching. You can see we've got orange. Looks like he took the, the motherboard tray part out and had that powder coated or painted in orange that matches. My issue with this build here is two things. One, the red and the blue AN fittings. This particular picture, it looks, it looks very red on the motherboard, but you can see it, it clearly is orange when you look at it here. Unless you're a green colorblind, that may not look orange, I don't know. You see the orange right there. My issue is the red and blue AN fittings, first of all. Those should have been black. And I feel like those should have been black because those are detracting from the theme overall because there's such a different shade of, like red is obviously within the spectrum of orange, right? And then the, the navy blue or mid middle blue, whatever that is, because I'm blue, yellow colorblind, is in the same spectrum as the blue that's the chassis and stuff. I feel like that takes away from it. If it was black, then your attention's more drawn to that theme you're trying to do. Secondly, I know he did this color because of engine coolant. But again, you don't see the engine coolant in the car. If you see the engine coolant in the car, something bad happened. <laughs> so I feel like that was a waste. And I feel like it should have just been clear. Or maybe if you tried to just mix coolant that matched either the orange or the blue of the color of the car, and then it would have tied in better. I get that you're trying to make this automotive coolant. I feel like you were like 90% of the way to making that an awesome golf theme. These are some things I would rework if it were just me personally. Not saying it's a bad build. Um, I'm just saying you did send it saying, Jay, what do you think? And that's what I think. All right, so Curtis asked what I think, 5900X, 32 gigs of RAM, 3080 Ventus. So this is another example here of why you just, in my opinion, just keep going at it if you, if you don't get your bends right the first time. I applaud that he's trying to fill out this case. Because he's not using a distribution block, which is what almost everyone does, he had to do a lot of runs himself. And as you can see right here, not a single tube in this system is parallel. And that's what's kind of bugging me about it because he, he's got his, his coolant temp sensor in there, that's great. He's got his Corsair block, he's, he's got his Corsair pump which I'm not sure why I went with white when there's nothing else white in here, but I digress, maybe that's all that was available. Uh, this is going slightly up and this is going slightly left. And then that's like, this is a hell of a bend here. Look at this, it's just like bend, or bend, 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 swoop back into, into the flow indicator. And then that's a separate pipe. But look at how far it all, it, it's off. That's why I don't even attempt trying to do crazy bends like that without a jig. With a jig, you could get it done. So I feel like this is one of those, I, I, I don't think I could have let this go. So I have a theory here, either you run out of tubing or you run out of patience or both. And um, I just want to kind of point this out because I, I, I feel like maybe you might want to simplify this loop a little bit. I mean, to clear the graphics card here, I can't tell the order of his loop because 
Yeah, you see how he had to kind of like, that's like off into the right and then it kind of curves behind the reservoir and then this one like goes out and then kind of comes back in and that's also at a weird angle. I, I applaud you for trying to do something different with the dynamic, the 11 dynamic, but I feel like it needs to be squared up, if that makes sense. And maybe shorten up some of these runs. I don't think you need this to be all crazy long and swoopy and stuff. It's almost like a little bit too ambitious for his patience level. Or just, I mean, I'm just gonna say patience and skill. It would take an extreme amount of skill to get this many bends. Perfect. Perfect. Like all 90s, Period. all 180s. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, the longer it is like this, once you put fluid in it, this gets weight as well. So to do that right, you probably would have had to have had it come up slightly so that once the weight is in there, then it sags to level. It probably, it might've been level before it got filled and then it sagged. But I, I just think that this might be one of those instances where less is more. Hey, Jason Romero. So because of the name, everything's perfect. It's the best build ever. No, I'm just kidding. It's a... <laughs> I was like, where are you going with no, this? This one, totally, <laughs> this one totally caught our attention here. Like, I don't even care about the specs, honestly. I mean, they're not bad. They're 3090 for the Win 3. I guess it's okay. Uh, 8700K. 8, oh. But let's check this out. This is a custom built from, from scratch open air chassis platform. So here it is sitting in his space. I don't particularly like the lighting scheme he did with his RGB. I feel like if he just left it all with warm whites based off the other stuff kind of going on in this setup, it would look so good because look at what it looks like in the daytime. Right, look at like this. if he used like the copper guys like, yes. like lighting. Like this build would also work very well in the copper guys setup. So this looks like he's running EK 16 uh, millimeter tubing, which is the fatter tubing. I like the fact that one, you can see this is clearly plywood that he's cut, routed, mounted, put feet on. He's got a vertical here. Even the buttons look super satisfying. He took a USB like out of a case and put it there. He's got three radiators on this thing. Look, a 360, probably a 360 and a 360 there. The D5's back there. You know what the super thick tubes remind me of? Like an old tube amplifier. Like it's like wood. Oh yeah, kind of. But then with all the big glass things on top and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like now imagine thing. if you lit it with like an incandescent temperature of yeah. lighting, but I love this because look at the, look, I like the crisscrossy yeah. of the tubes. And it's funny because that's like a major no-no with a lot of people when it comes to tubing is like never have them cross, but they're not actually fully crossing, but it just, it kind of looks like they are. But he's got a little flow indicator here. He's got another pump right there. I think this back here might just be an extra pump to keep it moving because there's a lot of stuff happening in this loop. I love all the perfect fit edges. Yeah. Like it's just so satisfying to look at. Everything passes through his motherboard tray here. I just like those bends on the tube, it's the tubes. Yeah, it's an awesome build. I really like it. Oh, the power button too. Looks dope. Yeah, the power button lights up. See, it's got a little ring light. Yeah, I love everything about this build. Sensor I, panel. I just wish the lighting. That's the thing about RGB. He could do that. He yeah, could decide he totally wants to good. change it. But. It's an interesting contrast. It's a very contrast, like contrasty build of like. Yeah. I, this is the technology part, and then this is the wood part, and they're both finished very nicely. The other thing I would recommend is just going with all black sleeves rather than orange. I don't know if he used these from another build, but I, there's nothing else orange here. Maybe he thought the orange would go better with the wood tone stain, or the wood stain that he used, but I don't think, the, I think those clash, personally. Either way, I just want, I, I felt he deserved to be showcased just because of this scratch build, which obviously looks super simple too to do. All right. Good job there, Jason. All right, moving on to Jordan on Twitter. He says it's his first water cooling build. Another 011, but hopefully the tubing makes up for it. At least he recognizes that the 011's kind of played out. But stainless steel tubing, not something I've seen often. It shouldn't be an issue in terms of mixed metals. I mean, it's better than if you were to use, a, than if you use aluminum tubing. But again, an extremely different concept. One, I'm not entirely sure, and I, and I hope if he sees this, he responds and asks, because I'm curious as to why this is here. This is not a piece of tubing that's used in the build. I mean, it's not supporting anything. What is this? That looks like a bracket that he can move up and down, right? But that's wedged between that fan and that fan. But I like his use of the stainless steel tubing. He's got the distro plate. Right, and I just like the fact that he, he probably used a bender like you would for electricians like conduit bending to do this. But see how these cross over? This is a no-no for most people. Like most people say, don't 
You should not be able to see tubes cross from any perspective, which I think is stupid. They could be whatever you want them to be. It's your system. This one's a little rough. It looks like he like bent it and then like, oh shoot, like had to like fix it kind of a thing. Or maybe that's just too sharp of a bend for this bender to try and make. So he got a little bit of kinking happening there. But for the most part, I just like it because it's different. I really want to know what this is supporting. I like it. It makes me go. It's like a. It's like a. It's like a maze. Like which way does the flow go? And you're all like trying to. You kind of get a little bit of it at the top too because it splits. Here. Yeah, you right get that here. Visual split. Yeah. Yeah, and I like that these two are like parallel. Yeah. To the really CPU. Good. Yeah. See, all you need is a is something to connect all the parts together to move the fluid, and then boom, water cooled PC. No, I like it. It's cool. Just, I, did you just invent tubes? I invented two. <laughs> but what I would like to know is one, what that, what that stick is, or that pole is supporting, and then two, I guess long-term user report. Like, I've never run stainless steel with nickel and copper, so I'm kind of curious as to what sort of potential mixed metal issues could pop up, if any. Uh, this is swing. Swing, 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 swing. Wayne's World. Anyway, the last few builds all had black MO RA3 360, but with the help of my mods, I have a white uh, MO RA3. So it's instead of a black, it's a white <laughs> with 420 of its own power supply. So he took this Corsair carbide case, which you normally can't fit a whole lot of water cooling in, generated a parallel loop between his CPU and his GPU, and then this is his radiator. What you can I still see. think he should have used the box fan as the cooler. It's clearly even bigger than his computer. Oh, it's awesome. I think it, it's pumping everything's on the outside right there. I love that it's just, first of all, clean setup. This, this, this looks like a, a, um, a music studio, in my opinion, like an engineering uh, music sound studio. Um, the wood tones, I love wood tones. It's kind of bugging me that the desk isn't centered with that arch, though. No, and the monitors are mismatched for the most part. I think these two might be the same. I, I, I guess... I don't like that I can see the cables behind them, but whatever. I like the wall sconces and the detail in the wall. But like you said, it's not centered with this. Yeah, the sconces make it more obvious that it's not centered. But the, he needs his laptop set up over here. He's got UPS down here, controllers. But I, I mean, look at the size comparison of his radiator versus the system. I mean, it's not the cleanest in terms of, like you said, Kyle's gaming mat right there looks awful in this setup because the bubblegum colors just don't go with this. Not a whole lot to critique except maybe cleaning this up. I mean, you can see the tubes running up here to the pump. Oh, he's got two pumps, two D5s. I guess you would need to, just with the height, it's having to climb right here alone. Right. I like it. I wish he'd given me more photos of it. All right, last but not least, one of the cleanest desk setups I've seen in a long time by Sander de Graaf. Look at this setup. He's got a lot of distribution blocks and reservoirs going on in here. You can see we've got some a radiator right here on the side. It's a 45 mil thick rad. Two uni fans from Lee and Lee. We've got that same Fantex distribution block we saw with one of the first setups we looked at today, but it's also obviously turned on its side, which is a very, look, a distribution block just means getting it from one spot to another. Sometimes they're built to specifically fit in a case, but you can still use them creatively in anything. So he's using that to get it through the GPU, through the CPU. But what I think is interesting here is if we look at this setup, each one of these, now these are just reservoirs. These do not have the pumps on them because you can get these little EK distribution slash res blocks with pumps in them. These don't have a pump, but he goes in and out of one, two, three, four, five of them to get them creatively across the way. What's interesting about this is he now has one, two, three, four, five places for air to get trapped in a good way because they could get trapped at the top of each one of these and it doesn't interfere with the loop as long as the water level is higher than the little divider right there. So again, this was totally unnecessary. What you would see in the past is somebody have a really long single piece of tube going all the way over to here, but he went, screw that. I want lighting and I want it to look completely filled up, which is what he did and I, I like that. What I'm not a fan of here though is these cables. I feel like the cables are kind of sloppy I feel like you could have done a better job there, especially since they're so visible and so easy to hide here. And especially considering he took the time to get that EVGA power redirector thingy for the GPU. Yeah. And then and it didn't bother to manage the other cables around it, which is kind of like, oh. It just looks like there's lots of room underneath the whole tray to actually just tuck the wires in. Yeah, that's like basic cable manager, right? That's yeah. regular yeah, there's room there. IO stuff. There's, there's, totally... there's room to cable manage that, yeah, for sure. I can't see where his pump is. I think it's, there might be a pump right there. I feel like it was just kind of the last, the home stretch of finishing the build, and you just want to throw it together. And get and pictures? Get, yeah, yeah, and get yeah. it going versus taking the time to just wrap it up. 
I don't know. I, I see enough dust and stuff potentially in this photo that this has been running for a little bit. So I don't think it was just finished, but I think maybe like cable management is one of those things that like some people were willing to just take as much time with the cables as they are their entire build. And some people are just like, screw it, yeah. you know? Uh, this is also gonna be something that's probably a love hate. Like, so he's got two double 90s here. One. Oh wait, maybe he has a double 90 possibly with a, a 45 in, or a, yeah, 45 in there. He did that so that he could just twist it in any possible way to get it to line up here. And then he's got an offset fitting right there. So I feel like he spent a lot of time with this tube right here trying to figure out exactly what would work. And then he finally said, screw it. Form over, or, uh, factor over, wait, no. Function, form over, function, function. over form function on that one. When the rest of these all kind of got lucky and lined up, right? I think what he could have done, honestly, is he could have done a 90 here, a 90 tube out and an extension and then a 90 up and then he would have had a single tube with a 90 bend. I think that would have worked. So it's possible that he just ran out of, uh, out of fittings. But if we look at, these are bits power fittings. So that's 20 something bucks. That's 20 bucks. That's 20 bucks. That's 20 bucks. That's 20 bucks. That's 20, that's 20. So it adds up quickly, right? Oh dude, Ed Plus is five radi or five freaking reservoirs. Yeah. Yeah, and each one of those are like 40, 50 bucks. Dude, so. 40, 80. Yeah, it's an expensive build. It's like 240 bucks in fittings just for the reservoirs. Yeah, so. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, you can see it right here from this angle. The wires really stand out right there. And I feel like just a few minutes of work could clean those up and then it would look absolutely like perfect at that point. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Uh, thanks for submitting you guys' photos. Hopefully, hopefully, if you guys are looking at doing some water cooling, the idea here was to give you some inspiration so that you can kind of see how some people go and approach it in a very conventional way. And other people just kind of really go out and, and come up with their own techniques, like those copper builds, the wood builds I showed you, the wall mounts, like desk, the desk build, obviously. There's just lots of different ways you can do this. There's no right, there's no wrong. Uh, at the end of the day, it's your build. Don't care about what other people think about it, unless you want me to tell you what I think about it, and then you guys can make sure you follow on Twitter so you can be a part of next month's when we do this. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to, again, like I said, get your build potentially featured in one of these videos, we do this on Twitter every single month, usually at the start of the month, and then you guys can follow there to know when we're doing that. We always sort of change up the theme, water cooling, worst builds, streaming setups, all sorts of stuff. So, thanks for watching guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.